So I get a lot of questions, man. How do I sell annuities virtually over the phone? I want to I want to sell millions in annuities and make hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions of dollars, like my buddy, Mr. Ryan Palomini. What's up, man? How you doing, man? Great to see you. You too, buddy. We get this question a lot, man. Like, I, I, how do I how do I like own a niche and sell annuities virtually, like with the world we're living in? And you're doing it crazy successfully. <laughs> you know, it, it's been a combination of learning this whole process for the last five years. And so we were fortunate, man. I mean, obviously, I was trying this virtual thing last year, not realizing there's a pandemic coming. Right. And so uh, we were fortunate. In, in, in August of last year, I started trying some stuff over the phone, trying to some work leads over the phone in different states to actually just kind of prove to ourselves that it could work. And believe it or not, it did. And so, you know, now that the pandemic had hit, we've been really lucky because we had a head start in the game. And so there, what I love about this, though, and we're going to talk a lot about this, is it allows you to scale your business across the country, no matter where mm. you are. And we'll talk a lot about that. But yeah, man, it's been a great year uh, doing this thing virtually. And uh, just a lot of people probably have heard my story before, but I used to have four different offices, three in Virginia, one here in North Carolina. I was traveling like a madman at those offices, you know, Monday through Friday at one of my other offices and, you know, doing really well, writing eight, nine million dollars a year in annuities. But man, I was exhausted. And so this year, I'll yeah. tell you, Cody, right now I'm pacing a million dollars a month and I have not left my office since March of this year. We shut our offices down in Virginia and I'm doing everything 100% virtual, and we've almost doubled our annuity volume by not leaving this office, becoming more effective and efficient than ever before. That's crazy because you think about it naturally. Like it's like, okay, I, I can never do that. I've got to go to yeah. people's homes and I got to show them brochures and I got to go on multiple appointments. I got to go back, <laughs> drive four hours again next week. Like, you know what I mean? All this yeah. stuff, but that's apparently that's not true, man. I mean, what, uh, you've clearly figured it out. And what do you think has been the biggest thing that you've figured out that most other people haven't yet? It's really our process. I'm not going to say is flawless, but it's pretty darn close. I mean, we yeah. we have built a machine in my office. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Uh, you know, I, I come from the mortgage protection and final expense world, as a lot of people know. And, yep. you know, I was always chasing the next lead like a lot of people do. And mm -hmm. for me... I'm very systematic. So I had to really kind of take a step back five years ago and really figure out what it is that I wanted to accomplish. And so obviously for the last five years, I've been learning this annuity world, becoming a student of the game. Uh, but in that process, building a sales process that allows me to have these kind of results, no matter where I am in the country, no matter if it's virtual, in person, it doesn't matter. The process works. I think that's what's really important is, and I'll talk about that, our sales process and some of the things that we've done to get to where we are. But, you know, that's, that is so important is the way that we think about this, uh, you know, being able to pivot and to become innovative, you know, through these times has really led us to where we are right now. That's awesome. Yeah. Cause a lot of people, man, they're like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna close my office. I'm just gonna sit back. I'm gonna get rid of all my employees and I'm not gonna do nothing until this thing is over. I'm gonna hunker down yeah. and you're, and you're growing and scaling and doing more Absolutely. production than you were doing face to face. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's and that's the dead truth. And here's why, Cody. When I was when I had all my offices, I was like I said, I was going to each one. So I'll give you an example. Um, Roanoke, Virginia. I had an office in Roanoke, Virginia. So I'd go to Roanoke for two or three days, meet with clients, do my first appointment with them, drive back home, do all my reports, go back and sell a bunch of annuities and IULs and big whole life and big life cases. Right. But that was very time consuming because I'm on the road, I'm away from home. And I could only see clients in Roanoke, Virginia that day. Then the next day I'd have to go to Richmond, Virginia, where my other office was and so on and on and on. Right. But what this has allowed me to do virtually is to is to talk to people in seven different states in one day. Wow. So it allowed me to take my little, you know, my little area of Virginia, North Carolina, where I was, you know, writing, you know, eight, nine, ten million dollars a year in annuities and yeah. be able to scale it all the way across the country where like this year. I'm, you know, I live here in Raleigh, North Carolina. This year, I've done over $3 million in the state of Texas, and I haven't left my office. You see what I'm saying to me? So I could never do that. And in, in the same day, I'm selling an annuity in Texas. I'm also selling annuities in uh, Utah, New Mexico, you know, Virginia, Massachusetts, 
you name it. I've sold in over 17 states this year and I haven't left my office. So it's cool to me to yeah. be able to take that and scale that. Now he's bragging, man. He's a freak. <laughs> he's a super freak, man. Dude, did you ever think he'd be selling annuities Never. in you? In freaking Utah, man, you're you're in North Carolina. Sure. You know, you're in Duke, Duke country. You know, never, never, man. You know, and that's the thing about this that's exciting is yeah. I had to build my own belief in this. Like I knew you could probably sell some insurance over the phone, yeah. but to write a million dollars a month virtually, I never thought in a million years it was possible because I'm from the old school way of doing seminars. You know, yeah. the dinner seminars and, and coming to see me in my office, and that was the way that I've done it for the last five years. And we had to change, man. We had to innovate with the times. I love it. I love it, dude, man. Um, <laughs> what do you think before we actually like start to break down and you start to actually do some training and really help and provide some additional value, um, which you always do a great job of? What do you think is possible? Like, where's this thing going? Because it feels like to me, not, not only are you creative, you're, you're, you're always thinking outside the box. You're always freaking pushing the envelope. Like, how do I do more? How, you know, you know what I mean? Wh 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 where do you see this thing going? Because I don't see Ryan Palomini always being comfortable with a million bucks a month over the phone. No, no. And, and so, so I've always ran my business in phases. And I think that's one of the most yep. important things for any entrepreneur to focus on it, you know, cause I know everybody wants to go from zero to a million dollars overnight, but it doesn't work that way. And so, you know, for us, Cody, the next phase of my business, and I know this is kind of next level stuff, but the next phase for my business is we're building out our wealth management book. And mm. so, you know, yes, I'm doing a million dollars a month in annuities. It's great income, great revenue, allows me to scale and grow my business. But my next goal is to get to a billion dollars in assets under management in within the next seven years. So, mm. you know, that's the next thing for us. And so, yeah, no, I'm not satisfied with a million dollars, but, you know, I'm, I'm getting into the wealth management side of this world. You know, again, five years ago, I was slinging final expense, never in a million years thought about wealth management, never thought about getting that level. But you know, when you're writing this kind of annuity volume, you're leaving a lot of money on the table too, because suitability, you can't get it all. You know, if I have a client that's got half a million dollars, and I can only get 300,000 of it. What about the other 200,000 that I can't put into an annuity because of suitability, right? So right. it allows us to go back and pick up a lot of money that we've left on the table over all these years. And we've done a phenomenal job of keeping our CRM full, but you know, I don't even have to prospect anymore. I got my book of business that I can go back to with all my yeah. clients who have annuity dollars. I've got millions and millions outstanding. So those are the kind of things, Cody, is, is and I can't get to a billion alone. I have to get there with my team, right? Yep. So we're building out platforms now uh, that allow people to get into the wealth management side of things, manage money for a fee, uh, and really kind of build it. So I, I would say my goal is to get 10 of my guys to a $100 million book of business, which will bring us to a billion. And obviously, you know, we'll be at over probably $200 million in annuity volume at that point as an agency. Jeez. I need a loan, Ryan. RP, I need a loan. <laughs> we're man. doing that too, by the way. We're, 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 we're breaking out something where we're doing venture capital for uh, uh, loans for CPAs and loans for advisors to help them come off their business. So we'll, we'll talk that's about awesome. that at a different time. Dude, that's, that's unbelievable. Uh, you're like, you're like, you know, you're thinking big, man. We're like, you know what? Why think millions when we could think billions? You know, well, that's I mean, the thing, right? I mean, look, I'm 33. I'm going to be in this industry yeah. for the next 30 years. I mean, so that's the thing too, is if you plan on being in this, you really yeah. need to run your business in phases, right? Because if I just stayed in mortgage protection and final expense, look, I was making six figures doing that, but I got burnt out. I was ready for something more, right? And so then I got into the annuity world, pretty much mastered this world, not, not the board, but it's, you know, what's the next challenge, right? So you have yeah. to be challenging yourself. And so the right. next phase to me of my business is to get to that level. Now, I don't think everybody wants to do wealth management. It's not for everybody. But sure. if that if you're really trying to strive to get to build your business to the next phase, then you have to figure out what's next. And that's what's next for me. Yeah, dude, you're 33. You, I mean, I don't know, man. You're you're old. You know, you're I old am, now. Man. I'm, I'm old in this yeah. industry, right? I'm getting old now, man. It was cute when I was yeah. making six figures at 25. Now you're 33. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, for real. That's what's, that's, that's what's funny is the average age of an insurance agent is 59. Um, we're, I just hit 30. We're both low 30s. Um, but yeah, you're right, man. We're, we're going to be around for another 30, 20, 30, 40 years uh, getting yeah. after it, doing the thing. I love it, man. I, I love to see your growth. Um, Thanks, man. What, what's, what's the sales? What, what's, how did you learn? Is the sales process different from face-to-face yeah. -to, -face to, to virtual? Great question. The answer is absolutely no. Uh, so here's, here's, what I, here's what I would say, Cody. Prospecting is important. And I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm going to be very honest with everybody. I've always said this, you know, I, I've been in a niche market for a long time. I work in the federal space predominantly. 
And I'm going to kind of give you guys a story. So this is, this is, I, I like to ask this question and I'm, I'm going to say this is, you know, this morning I did a three hour long training for a $300 million FMO and they wanted to talk about this process. And so I, do, I dove really deep into it. Well, one of the questions that I asked the people that were on that call is, and this is something that I ask myself every single day. And I think it's very important in this industry. And the question is, is what makes you different, mm. right? It's a simple question. But I don't think people think about it enough because I have this I have this saying in my office. I look at it every single day and it reminds me what I need to do daily. And that is to stay in my lane and to create space between me and the next person. So mm -hmm. I look at it every day. It says stay in your lane and create space. I think that is so important because we are in such a flooded industry, right? We have so many people. There's over 300,000 financial advisors. So what makes you different from the person next to you? Right. And, and, you know, here I am in Raleigh, North Carolina. Dude, you could throw a rock and hit 40 advisors in the head. Right. So why does somebody skip past the other five offices to come to mine on the way down the hallway? And that's something that we as a, as a group and as an agency strive for excellence wise every single day is, is how do we become better? How do we continuously keep creating space in our industry? And so five years ago, when I started thinking about that, I thought about, yes, listen, I can do seminars, which I do. Uh, I can do social security seminars, but it's no different than what all the other advisors are doing. So I really wanted to focus. I think everybody needs to focus on figuring out a niche, finding a niche market that you can get into and really start to create space in. And, and Cody, that's what I did five years ago in the federal market. I work with federal employees uh, all over the country. But again, predominantly, the reason I moved here from Raleigh to Raleigh was because I built a really good brand it, you know, in the federal space between North Carolina and Virginia. So I was able to do a lot of business, you know, with the federal employees, but that took me five years to build up. And so, you know, from a prospecting perspective in, in creating space, my sales mm -hmm. process is all about being different than anybody else that they're ever going to talk to. And that was what I talked about with that $300 million group today was you have to find ways to be different, right? And so it comes down to your sales process. And I'm going to tell you right now, my sales process from the time that I went from face to face to doing this virtually has not changed. It didn't change it at all. The only thing I changed is probably making fun of myself and how I can't use technology for crap and getting people to laugh at me, right? Because I'm a millennial that can't get this mic to work half the time. So, you know, it, but, but it's cool because you get to make fun of yourself and you have to be comfortable enough to do that, right? So you see my setting. So I'll give you an example. Is, 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 this, is this where you do an appointment right, right here? This is it. This is my war room right here, man. This is my clients see this. So I think one of the things too is invest in your business, right? You have to invest in something that's professional, especially if you're going to do millions of dollars of annuities and financial planning over the phone. You know, you have to be presentable. It's, you have to create a space where your clients feel like they're sitting with you, right? Because right now you're looking at me and you're sitting across. It feels like you're at the end of my conference table and we're having a conversation, right? And so when I'm doing my virtual appointments, this is exactly where I do it from, right here in this chair. They can see my office. My staff walks past here all the time. So they see other people going back and forth through the window. It's a professional <laughs> setting that people can, you know, can feel comfortable with. They know that I'm not sitting in my basement, you know, my yeah. mom's basement. And, you know, I see all these people doing virtual stuff with their computer, you know, up their nose. You know, they got their camera pointing straight up their nose. Look at their nose hair. It's just weird. Like, like be professional. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I'll answer your question, though. My sales process hasn't changed a lot. It's just more of being uh, a little bit more thorough, right? Because if I've got somebody sitting here next to me, you know, we can touch, feel, and it's just different. It's a different vibe. So you have to do a better job of being more transparent, being open. Uh, and really letting people warm up to you do with this virtual thing, right? Because if I'm working with somebody in Texas and I live here in North Carolina, it's just different when we're not face to face, but it doesn't mean you can't do the same things and, and, and you know, have the same feelings with that client. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. A while back, I did 50 grand in 30 days over the phone. And you say, well, dude, that doesn't seem realistic. The phone is tough. Selling over the phone is hard. You know, everybody hates the phone, right? There's a lot of people that 